Okay, so today we're making a poster. It's 11 by 17, and we're going to look at how to create these shapes and then put some text in them that will be then expounded upon or expanded on in these lower boxes down here. I got the idea looking at how to make a timeline in Adobe Illustrator by this graphic artist from England named Paul Butt, and he made this one for uh, Doctor Who versus the dialects in Doctor Who, and he does a good job of explaining how he goes about the process, and this is what he does for a living, is he makes these for magazines and uh, television shows and what have you. And so he sketches it out first, and then he goes about the business of setting it up. So I've simplified this a little bit for my students to, uh, to, to build this up in these shapes here. Uh, and I'm going to start off by, as you can see here, I've already built this. But what I'm going to do is take my layer panel and I'm going to undock it, because I use that thing like crazy. And I'm going to hide this layer that I've already finished. And I'm going to start building this extra layer down here with a bunch of circles. So let's talk about how to make the circles. And I'm going to start from scratch in that layer. OK, so you can see that I have some red guidelines in here. And it's really important that you put your guidelines in a separate layer. If you're in my class, you're going to get these uh, this setup file. And the part that you're going to have to do is the part that this tutorial is about. So these guidelines are there to help me snap my shapes into place. So starting with the outer circle, I'm going to select the point in the middle. Now, normally, if I click and drag, I can make a circle anywhere I want. And Shift makes it a perfect circle. Without Shift, I got an ellipse. But it draws from the top left corner of a box in which the circle sits. So if I click here and drag, it makes that circle. I want to draw with this as the center point. So I'm going to use the Alt key. Holding down Alt, I click. And I'm going to use Shift, of course to make that a perfect circle. Now I did some math on this ahead of time and I know what size I want this to be. So the top one, oh there it is, 9.5 inches and that's the width and the height. My next circle is going to be 8 inches. So using Alt again and Shift, I go up to here and I'm sort of guessing and that's 8.5. Uh, I'm going to change that to 8 and this will give me a half inch height Let's try it in a quarter just for thrills. And that'll give me a little bit of room for some text to go in there. I need two more circles. So this is going to be an outer band uh, as per this outer set over here. So I'm going to use that reference point. And going back, I'm going to make two more circles. The next outer circle is going to be, and again, I use Alt and Shift. And this one is going to be 7.75. And that creates the gap between these two, which will be empty. So I'm going to change that number there to 7.75. And tab, 7.75. And that one's good to go. And the final circle is going to be 3 inches. And look, I guessed right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these to cut up into shapes. So taking the outer two by drag selecting or click and then shift click. I like to drag select because it is one-handed. And now I need to get the Pathfinder panel. The Pathfinder allows me to do lots of cool cut and paste stuff. So using this and with reference to those two selected shapes, when I click minus front, it took that and made a donut out of it. So you can see now there's a gap between this circle and this set of graphics here. So now I'm going to take this circle and shift click the circle. So I'm going to make a similar donut here. So now I've repeated the same process. Now the thing I'm trying to accomplish is to build this into uh, just that shape there. So I have to find some other shapes to, to cut that out using the same minus front. So we're going to take a look at how to do that next. So in order for me to be able to cut these shapes out of these shapes, I need to be able to do a couple things. One is I need to make uh, the fan shape to cut that out of. And again, I've already done some math for you, so we're going to take a rectangle. It's going to have no stroke around the outside. I'm going to go ahead and make it red so I can see it, know that that's my cutter. And on my layer where this is, let's see, I'm on this layer, so I'm going to unlock that layer. Everything else should be locked, and it is. So I'm going to go to this layer, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. And if I click and drag, my grid is on. I've made that shape there. And that's actually a lot wider than I want it to be. So I'm going to use my transform panel.
to reduce the width of that to like, uh, let's go with 0.25 for now. And now that will be the cutter that uh, draws between. And if I zoom in down here, I can see that that shape is centered on my midpoint that I've drawn as my, my sort of uh, focal point for my shape. So there's a tricky, easy way to make this work for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotation tool. Now the rotation tool is the rotate tool, and it's right there. Uh, keyboard shortcut is R. And the way it works is I'm going to first click on the center point of the rotation. So I'm going to click there on that center point I built. And actually, if I click Alt, what I want to do first is I'm going to rotate it to the right by what actually turns out to be negative 81 degrees. So I've got preview on, and now I have to click OK. So what I'm doing is I'm going to bring that fan back around from the other side. I'm feeling like that's a bit thick, so I'm going to change the width to like 0.125. And so we'll go through that process again with the rotation tool. And I'm going to Alt click. And what I'm seeing right now is a preview. So if I click the preview on again, that allows me to sort of guess through. And it gets 81 degrees to the right. So what we're doing from there is we're going to copy them to the left one at a time. So I have to do alt click again on that midpoint. It looks like I missed just a smidge and I really want to get that midpoint right on. And the number now is going to be 27. And if I click copy, it's going to keep doing this. So now I've set that up until I'm going to have and I got to click copy and I'm going to have six pie slices. So every time I click copy, now you can see that I've gotten it slightly off, but I have six pie slices. A couple of my shapes are a bit off. Now for you to use this as a cutting device to punch through these other shapes, and it'll only do one shape at a time, so I cannot do both of these at once. So what I need to do is select all those pieces, and now in the Pathfinder, I'm going to use this one here, which is Unite. So that makes that from a bunch of pieces. Let's look at that in the Layers panel. The Layers panel shows me I've got selected with that blue dot there a whole bunch of those shapes, but when I push Unite, it makes one item out of it, which is kind of handy. And I'm going to need this twice, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it onto the Copy Layer panel, the, the New Layer button. By dragging something to the New Layer button, it uh, duplicates it. I'm going to lock and hide this copy, and the lock and hide this copy down here. So if I take this one and select both objects, and you can see here that the blue dot shows me they're both selected. Now I'm going to do minus front. So there, that works pretty good. I'm happy. Um, this actually now is, is shown as a group. And I cannot cut the shapes out unless I either get inside the group by double clicking it and reducing the back one. Or another way to go about it is to, oops, I went too far the other way. Uh, reduce subtract. So the other way is I can take the thing and I can say, let's just ungroup it. So if I ungroup it, then I can delete this piece. Oops, I've deleted all of them. Okay, so you select just the one you want to get rid of. Now, what I'm going to prefer to do right now is I'm going to um, punch that out again. And I'm going to want to maintain the group because that way the pieces all stay together. Now, up here in the left part of my stage or my canvas, it shows I'm inside of a group. So to get out of the group, I just either click up here or just double click to get out of it. Now I've got this shape, which is still a group. So we'll do the same thing. Let's hide and lock that one and show and unlock these other two pieces so I can do the same procedure with them. So I only need the top part, so I'm going to double click to get inside the group, which is shown up here, select the bottom piece, double click to get out, and I'm going to turn on all my shapes. So now I'm ready to put my text and my graphics in there.